Okay, so I've just completed the build of the free wing 64 millimeter F22. Uh, I added some fingernail polish actually, uh, added some accent uh, on the top surfaces um, right here and here and didn't do anything to the bottom. I This is going to be a belly lander so I've taken out the um, the landing gear and I did not install the back ones. I did cut the covers in half so that I can at least get my fingers in here to uh, to la hand launch it um, and uh, instead of removing them now of course you can just not put them in but I wanted to cut down on how much drag this is going to create. Um, <clears throat> I did install an afterburner and I also installed a X-Fly 64 millimeter fan that's inside there. So there's a uh, X-Fly 64 millimeter 4S ED up in here. Um, I, I'm using a uh, Skywalker Hobby Wing 60 amp ESC, although this ESC calls for a, um, uh, a 40 amp ESC, but it is, going way beyond 40 amps so anyways i just uh cut out this area here and it is compression fitted in so this thing actually just pushes down in there to about here now, i've tried to move this back a little bit only because uh putting in these high c rated batteries which i'll get to um, it takes a lot of uh, a lot of weight up here, and it's hard to get the CG right. But uh, there been there's a couple things that needs needs to be done in order for you to get to the CG. Uh, install if you're installing a 60 amp, probably push it back as far as you can. I actually ended up cutting the wires from the ESC, and um, and then making them shorter, so that it just goes from the uh, ESC. Or rather I did it yes I did it from the ESC so it just plugs in right here but there's just not a whole lot that's gonna sit down in in the area where the uh, intake is so and as you can see uh, maybe you could see that so I shorten those up put a little zip tie it hides behind the intake goes like this so it hides behind the um, the uh, uh, foam that's underneath here and this is just sitting on top of the foam as well. So that's what I did with that. Um, the ESC, I just, it has a flange. I just took a razor and deepened it a little bit so that the cover completely fits. I didn't have to shave anything out of this because the X-Fly basically fit right in there. So, um, which I have a lot of, um, Dr. Mad Thrust, but those EDFs are, are bigger. They're not a true 64 and a true 50 mil. They, and I've always had to end up shaving out um, uh, some of the foam around the EDF. The X-Flies are nice. They do fit right in there. And like I said, uh, just ended up cutting where the ring is, where the uh, around it, and just used a razor and widened it a little bit so that it sits flush. Uh, this will get blue, glued back on once I'm done, but I just wanted to show you that part. All right, the build on this, I'm not gonna show you the build because it's really simple. It all just, it all just get, uh, screws in together. So I'm not gonna go, with, go into that. Um, now, in order to get these higher C rated batteries, this is a Liperior 2200 milliamp 75C discharge 4S battery. Uh, the weight on it is 281 grams, okay? So there's that one. And the other one I have, oh, all right, it's charging. Um, the other one I'm gonna use for this is the Roaring Top 2200 milliamp ADC, which I can tell you it's probably, this one's a 70C, this one's an ADC. This is much bigger and heavier. So I think they, are not accurate on their C ratings. Um, this this battery here is 244 grams. 
So this one is uh, 281 and this one's 244 grams. <clears throat> and what I had to do in order to get the CG right is that this foam comes to about right here. Okay, so it comes about right there. So this area here, which is normally all foam, I took a large uh, blade soldering iron and I just melted it back. It's really easy, really fast, really easy. The heat just shrinks up the foam. And so I melted it all the way back to basically this, the, the uh, battery compartment wall. In order for me to shove these batteries back farther from here, back to here, okay? Now by doing that, um, and then I place the receiver right here instead of up here where I originally had it through through there, um, but I ended up having to push this back farther as well. But here are the results. Oh, and then there's a LED afterburner kit by 5280RC, um, which I put in. And the controller, which originally was up here, but I couldn't get the CG right. Actually, I widened this hole that's already in this plane and with the soldering iron, just carefully, and widened enough so that I had to apply pressure to push it in and push it back into there. So the controller is about this long. And it's it's actually under here right here and let's see here i don't know if you could see it yeah you can kind of let's see here you could see it's right here um and it's and it's kind of hidden behind the um the foam that goes like this from the intakes so hopefully i won't create too much turbulence but anyways that's where it's at it's in there and it's just push through the hole that's already in this model and it's not being used so that's going there and then the wire for it is right here from the EDF and it comes up through there and it comes in right here so there's that and it's going to the Y adapter which I had to buy a short short one little uh, four centimeter and it goes and i just mounted it here and then it goes uh to a y adapter which uh, comes out of the uh, throttle channel so the this one goes to the edf this other one the other part of the y adapter goes to the to the uh edf or rather excuse me this one goes to the uh um, afterburner and this one here goes to the edf which i've kind of cut it in and oh, and put it into the wall there and you can already see what I did with the elevator and the aileron and the uh, uh, connection to the um, afterburner. Kind of recess those in so they're not just in the battery bay loose. Okay so now with this cut all the way back I can then insert the larger battery and just push it as far back as I can get it and then connect it. This one here can, I'm just going to push it back for the most part. I don't have to push, jam it back because it's not as heavy and then connect it here. All right, so let's talk about the CGs. With this cut all the way back to the edge of this uh, battery compartment, <clears throat> The CGs I'm getting with this setup and uh, with the uh, afterburner, which definitely is affecting the CG, it's heavier. Um, and you can see where this is sitting here. Um, the CG I'm getting with the uh, 281 gram 2200 uh, battery is right there. The CG I'm getting with the Roaring Top uh, 2200 uh, battery is back here, right, right at the uh, right at the center 
the middle of the suggested CG. So the suggested CG is 83 uh, to 88 millimeters. This heavier battery pushed all, jammed all the way back, I should say. I'm getting approximately 82 to 83. So I'm almost within uh, the specification there, 82 to 83. This one, which is a 244 gram battery, I'm actually at 85 to 86. So I'm pretty much dead center in their recommended um, CG. Uh, so now uh, I think that's it as far as the build and what I did to achieve the CG and how it's laid out. Um, I think that's, you know, I'm always looking on YouTube for uh, builds and how to best do stuff. And, um, and I think I've covered the things that I'd be looking for. Uh, I am going to go ahead and put a battery in here and, um, <clears throat> and, uh, and do a watt test just so you can see what I'm pulling with this setup. All right. Okay, so uh, I've got the Liperior 2200 milliamps 75C battery uh, in here. Uh, it's currently charged, fully charged. It's at 16.83 volts. And uh, we're going to do, I don't know if you can see that, hopefully you can. And we're going to do a, uh, a watt. Uh, test on it, so we'll run and rev it up. Okay, with the afterburner plugged in to the Roaring Top ADC 2200 milliamp battery, uh, what I'm getting is 57.63 peak amps, 14.39 voltage minimum, and 852.9, I think it was. Let's see. 852.9 peak watts. So that's what I'm getting with the um, afterburner light plugged in. Okay, so I did line, I used some uh, HVAC ducting, uh, which is a adhesive backed uh, foil. So I did put foil in there and on the sides. Um, let's see if I can get a better view of that inside here. So I put it on the sides as well. Uh, and inside top, top on all four, top, bottom, left side, right side on both. So we'll go ahead and test this out now okay let's see let's get the motor on all right motor on let's go ahead and spin it up I'm going to redo uh, the afterburners with the lights in my hobby room turned off. I'm going to do a weight, uh, thrust to weight ratio, or at least see what happens in a static situation. Um, <clears throat> so here's, I've got the, uh, the bigger battery and the 75C battery in here. I do have the uh, power to the afterburner. Now without the, with this setup, the XFly 64 mil, that battery, I was able to get greater than one to one thrust. Uh, definitely. I mean, it would go up like this. Um, I, with the extra weight 
of the um, of the uh, uh, the afterburner light and the, the controller and uh, it's definitely heavier because the CG went off and had to be redone. But let's give this a try. We're gonna, I'm going to go ahead and throw this thing up with a freshly charged battery. Well, as you can see, it now does not have greater than one to one thrust ratio with the uh, afterburner hooked up and it drops. Not a lot. I mean, it drops slowly, but it's definitely affected uh, the, the thrust to weight ratio by adding the afterburner. Now, this may be just a novelty. It's gonna suck the battery dry. It's, a, it's just, yeah, a shortened flight time. So I will probably just fly this, check it out, be a nice little novelty. But most likely i'll end up ripping it out <laughs> um it just it, it is significant with it in now i mean before it would it would go up like this uh now as you can see it it just slowly drops down so so that's another piece of information i wanted to provide you um and uh i think that's it i think i've given you all the information that you need um uh there it is, the build, the afterburner. It's ready for a maiden. So I guess uh, I'll take a video when that time comes. It's been rainy here in Seattle, Washington and forecasted for rain for the next 10 days. But uh, um, yeah, uh, maybe uh, maybe next month before I can get out and actually give this thing a, a maiden and see how well it flies. But anyways, until then. <laughs>